Hey everybody, how you all doing out there? It's Johnny from Johnny's Green Extractions. Well, today we are going to um, build ourselves a tumbler for, you know, a tumbler for tumbling crystal or the keef or kiff, however, I don't know how some of you say it, but to tumble the crystal out of your, uh, your shake, your bud, whatever you want to call it. Um, so I ended up starting off this project by purchasing some um, silk screen that is uh, this is a hundred and ten microns um, you could use different size microns but this is what we're we're gonna go with this gives you a little smaller crystals which are uh, better because the bigger the holes the more dirt and stuff gets through and uh, you get a little better product with a finer mesh like this so I ended up purchasing a yard or two of this stuff online and uh, what I did so far was I I ended up folding it over folding it over basically like that and uh, I, I sewed a hem into it like a small hem a doubled over hem you know I'm not a sewing instructor but I did a double hem over on uh, on the edge of the seam here all the way down and I I formed myself uh, basically as big of a sock as I could um, see there's my seam once you do the seam you fold it inside out so the outside's nice and smooth right strong use some good good uh, good sewing thread so it doesn't uh, come apart on you this is super strong actually so what I did now is I made myself this tube. As far as the length goes, well, that I'm gonna figure out because I gotta, I gotta basically um, figure out how big of a container this is gonna fit in, like a plastic container. Um, so I'm not sure if it's gonna be this long or this long or this long. Depends what I can find. So my next step on getting this ready was gonna be, um, by the way, this same mesh that I bought here, um, I have this old rolling tray and I, uh, I recently burnt a few holes in it by smoking over top of it and stuff, but I just replaced the mesh on this one, um, on this old, old rolling tray here. And you can see the crystal that it's getting on here. It's a pretty nice, nice fine stuff. That'll, that'll be a nice uh, powder to smoke there. So uh, just, yeah, just another tidbit. But getting back to this, so, so what I did after I made my tube, the sock like this, I, uh, I ended up figuring out, figuring out myself uh, how to count a round hole with a jig here and a little, with the jigsaw with a little um, jig I made just to go around and make a circle like this. So uh, that's gonna fit this, a wooden uh, plywood, um, circle that's going to fit fit on uh, the inside diameter of this here okay inside but uh, I tried mine and mine's a slight bit big so I'm gonna I got a like a, a sander I'm gonna go round and round on it and take a little bit down but first I'm gonna cut the other one and uh, cut another one and then I'll, I'll screw them together double them up and then I'll uh, sand them so they're both exactly the same and um, from that point there, I'm going to demonstrate and show you guys how to, how to go with uh, sort of the second step on this project, like how to, how to make the frame to go in there and stuff with, with uh, got these metal rods here. They're going to be going on the edge of the circle like that to the other one with nuts and bolts coming through and that's also going to hold the silk screen like down the down the center stretch here and hold these two pieces of wood in line at the right length that I'm gonna figure out to use all right guys so I just wanted to show you how I kind of made this little jig here I just bent the piece of metal I, I drilled a hole in the center and I needed a basically a 10 inch circle so I just went five inches from here to the blade you know and I uh, just held it on with the vice grip for now see so it it gives you a nice round circle if you don't have anything else I didn't have much here for cutting a circle so 
Yeah, this kind of worked pretty good, so I just kept working our way around. Alright guys, so getting back to this homemade uh, tumbler here. Um, I've got to this point here. I ended up cutting <clears throat> I ended up cutting two nice circles out of wood. I, uh, I did figure out the diameter I needed by the by the tube I made here. What I did was I I took the width like this and then I did my pi r radius thing and figured this out. Um, anyways, I cut two like that and then I ended up drilling quarter inch holes in the corners like that and I used quarter inch uh, threaded rod and I made myself the basically the frame that's going to go in right now. The hole on the top is going to be going to get this after with a, a plate of metal on here with little magnets that's going to hold this back in place here. Um, this is the entrance to put your stuff in. Here's the, the sock I made. And it's simply going to get pulled over top of this after, but I'll show all that to you. First thing I'm going to do now that I built my frame, and I, I measured this in one of those plastic containers I found here. It's going to work. It, it fits inside there. So um, next move I'm going to do on mine is I'm going to take this all apart, and I'm going to paint my wood just to coat it with some clear coat or something. Um, you know, just, just, just so it's not bare wood like this. I ended up painting my pieces here, um, the bottom one here, the top one, the top one's got the hole in the top of it, so um, I kept the I kept the cutout piece because we're going to need that later in this. This is going to go back in this hole after. I'm going to show you how to fasten all that on there. Um, and then I also... Um, did these uh, threaded rods right here these rods I used a threaded rod with uh, just a, a nut with a shoulder on it so uh, got four rods in there buckled down with another nut on the outside and then what I did was I ended up um, when I tried my sock here over top of my my rings here I found that it was, I found that these rings could have been cut just a little bit bigger to make this a little tighter on there. So I ended up putting some of this uh, gasket, uh, which I have right here. It's like a rubber gasket. Um, it's, 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 it's thin stuff. This is one eighth and it's sticky on the back. You peel this. So I ended up putting that on here on the edge of the rim here see that so now when I pull my sock over top of this uh, this whole thing here which I'm gonna do right away I'm gonna put my my uh, mesh my silk screen uh, sock over this and then I'm gonna fasten it fasten it on on the top and bottom edge here um, I got this stuff I'm going to use, but when I get to that step, I'll show it to you. All right, so I ended up um, using this, um, where's that stuff I had here? Yeah, I used this kind of an edge in here, I'll show you. All it is is um, it's an upholstery edge in. I just, I ended up folding mine in half and then I, I folded it in half like that and then I ended up stapling it on top. Um, of the one edge here. I don't know how great you can see that, but um, worked out pretty good. I stapled it all the way around so far. Here, could you hold this for me? And I just want to show them that I'm slicing this uh, the silk screen off now on the one end. This is not a very great blade I'm using, it's so old. Um, anyways, watch you don't slip and end up cutting your mesh on the drum side. <laughs> okay. 
All right, so a couple loose hairs here. I'll just end up probably taking a lighter or something and just. Psh, psh. So now I got the one side all buttoned up. Um, doesn't look too bad at all. So now what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to end up pulling on this end nice and taunt. See that? Giving it a little bit of a tautness to it. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to staple that edge. I'm going to need some help from uh, another partner on this just to get it tight while I staple it. <clears throat> Pulling up on it like this. Okay, so uh, once we got this drum built, I mean, there's a few more things. I'm going to show you how to add the ends on here, or what I want to do with mine anyways to get it tumbling in a box. But uh, we'll work our way there. We okay. got this one all together. This is my drum here now, all finished off. Looked pretty good. It's pretty taunt. It's actually pretty decent. I like it. I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Should work good, but I'm going to, um, I'm definitely going to uh, show you the next step on how I ended up putting what I'm going to do for the two ends of this thing uh, to make it rotate in a drum. All right, guys. Um, so I ended up um, figuring out figuring out my lid here. Um, I put a I put a row of gasket. I have this small gasket. I think I showed you earlier in the film. Um, I ended up, because of the saw cut from the blade, this lid's a bit small, so I ended up using this gasket. I'm gonna just push it in and show you. Okay, so yeah, I put a little row of gasket on the edge there, and now my lid seems to fit in this hole really nice. And I also, I also fabricated this little, you know what this was? Um, this was a chrome bolt I had. Um, I ended up, I'll show you the piece I cut off here. This was a chrome bolt I started off with. I'll show you. I, uh, I ended up cut, cutting that off um, and just left this, the end here. And then I had, I had a collar like this, which I have some of these sort of things like this from uh, my alternator and my working on my car. I just had some spacers like this, so I ended up I ended up uh, using one, a little one that I had right here, as you can see it on there, and and then before I I, uh, I welded it on this stem on the back side here where you don't see it underneath the wood, and then I simply just put a nut on there. So. This is going to be the one end of my my unit that's going to just sit in a like a, a little notched out deal or just spins in there. It's not the drive side. It's just going to be the spinning side. So I mean, you can do whatever you want. You basically got to get some kind of a rod out the end of the piece here. And I just put a stopper like that on there so that wherever this thing's rolling after, it's not going to be rubbing right against the wood. It'll be a little bit away like that. Okay. So I found this little convenient little 12 volt um, motor that's like in a little gearbox. Um, it had, it came with this, uh, no I don't have it no more. It came with a wheel on here, I ripped it off. But I ended up trying this when I got home on a, on a power pack, I'll show you. Just give me a second here to grab it. I ended up having this, this power pack from a, this, this power pack was actually from a vaporizer I have. And it's got 19 volts coming in the output. And uh, I hooked up the wires to this here to try it out. And I just lucked out, this thing sort of spins at a, exactly what I wanted to and it's really torquey with this little motor because it's in a gearbox here but uh, that's something you would have to find on your own um, when if you if you're building a, a tumbler like this you'll have to find some means of being able to turn your tumbler I mean you you can get creative and do whatever you want 
But this worked out pretty good for me. There's four threaded holes there. I'm gonna take this over and once I find the right tub, uh, once I find the right tub that, that's gonna work for me, I'm simply gonna kinda like mount this thing. Um, I'm gonna mount this thing, uh, you know, right on the box and then the shaft should stick through cause it's, it's just long enough. I'm just trying to figure out now how I'm going to go from this little shaft to my my wheel here to turn it so I'll I'll, um, I'll keep going on this but I'll, I'll show you what I come up with and we'll go from there all right oh and another thing I discovered when I got home today was this my um, my cloth on my say my tumbler here it uh, it wasn't as taut as I wanted to go because I pulled it tight when I was stapling it and I thought, oh, I got it as tight as I could. But then all of a sudden I was looking this thing over and I realized that all we have to do is like loosen the nuts a bit or uh, loosen these nuts a bit and turn the bottom nuts up and the bottom ones down to actually stretch it, to stretch this thing out because it's on rods. So I did that and now my now my tumbler's got a nice taunt um, feel to the to the silk here. So yeah, really happy about that. If I would have known that right at the beginning, I would have left my rods a little longer so that I could adjust it. So now I'm I'm kind of half in the nut only on these because I raised it. So because uh, I don't have any new rods, but yeah, if I do this again, I would make the rods longer. And then I would just tighten it all up till you're nice and taut and then cut the rods off after. So, yeah. And this lid here, the lid, what I plan on doing is using, if it's nice like that, I'm going to just put a little bracket across here and a bracket across here. And I'm going to put a little earth magnet in here and an earth magnet in there. And this thing will just kind of like click and, and, and uh, hold on there so it doesn't go in nor come off while it's tumbling. Okay, so I'm gonna be uh, going out to try to find myself a suitable tub now to buy to mount everything in. I gotta find one that's about, uh, I measured my container or my, my uh, wheel here. I'll show you. So I measure mine out and it's about, my wheel here is about uh, 20, almost 23. So I'm going to try to find a box that's at least 26 inside dimension. This one I have at home here is only, it's kind of shy, it's only 24. So I'm going to find, uh, go shopping for that and once I get that I'll, I'll show you the rest of how I'm going to build mine. Alright, I tried to figure out here what I was going to do to drive my drum and uh, I'll show you what I ended up doing here a little closer up. Um, I went to uh, Canadian Tire, which is here, uh, and I don't know if anybody's got, uh, everybody's got a Canadian Tire, but I bought a flat piece of steel. Looks like about 16 gauge. Um, yeah, I think that's what it is, 16 gauge. And I just, it's just a piece of flat. Okay, I bought that and I bought myself a piece of this rod, uh, 3 8 rod, or square square rod, I guess you'd call it, square stock, 3 8 okay, boom. And uh, what I did was I made, made myself out of this flat metal here, I made myself a little flat piece here, okay, and I took a piece of this rod and I, I got myself... Uh, a rod piece of rod welded on to this flat here and then I drilled four four holes in it so where I'm gonna place that now is on this drum here right here this is gonna be on the back of the drum now like that see that got to find the nice center and that's gonna be the drive side the other side I already showed you I made this this removable lid with the with the pin on the collar on there okay I still got to do the earth magnets I haven't done yet that yet 
that's coming. Um, but getting back to this drive side, um, let me just stand this up. I'm all by myself here. It's hard to film this and uh, by yourself. Okay, so I ended up making the flat plate like that, and then I, for the drive side, I think I showed you earlier that I bought this little motor from a surplus store, 12 volt, and it had a little shaft sticking out here nicely. And I found some bolts for the corner because I'm going to screw this to my my container when I get it, which I'm um, going to show you once I get it. So I ended up trying to fabricate my own little drive piece here. What I did was I I took some of this flat again and I kind of made myself on my on my uh, vise here and hammers and stuff uh, I made this u-shaped um, we'll call it the drive gear here so I, I made a u-shaped thing like that and then I ended up putting a little piece on the top there to sort of blank blank it off a little here on the top okay and then and then I ended up using a uh, half inch bolt I had and I drilled about a 5 16 hole roughly the same the same hole size I needed for this shaft so I could slip this on like that onto the shaft there this will go down the shaft's got some teeth on it here so when I push this down all the way it grabs pretty good so that's going to be the part that's going to be turning inside the tub this thing so yeah I figured that you know these parts would mate pretty good once we once we come in with the tub like that this thing will land in there like that and turn the drum and you'll be able to, you'll be able to lift it out out of there because of the notch in it here because of that notch should be able to like like take it and slip it in there you know and then land the other side on the pin so uh, yeah but you can do whatever you want I'm just showing you the uh, the way I went about mine okay so uh, yeah once I got it all mounted to the drum and I'll, I'll show you further so like I showed you earlier I went and bought a chunk of that 16 gauge flat stock uh, just metal and uh, I happened to cut all my pieces out of here. The last one I, I cut out was this one here. So I made myself a bracket. You know, I just, just got creative for the, uh, for the drum to sit in here in this, in this slot here. So I just V'd it a little bit on the top like that. And yeah, I just figured out the distance here. Once, once I found a tub, I went and got a tub here yesterday and um i needed one that was almost 28 inches inside so i happened to found this nice clear one here i'll go a little further back that clear tub and um i ended up uh, finding this one because it suited the length of the tube here i was looking for so since the last time i talked to you guys i ended up making that bracket i ended up showing you this little drive uh the way i made this so you can hook the the uh the cylinder in there i'll show you how it clicks in there and then i simply was able enough just to screw my motor right to the plastic see there at the four you can see right through it so I happened to just luck out and find this this little motor like this. I know they got a few more at the store for $14. Um, the plate of steel was about, oh, I don't know, 15 or so. Um, the tub costed me about 25. And um, the silk screen was also about 25. And then I had the plywood and the, the metal rods and the nuts and the bolts and the little things. And of course, I, I, also, had a, I also had a welder to 
fabricate this part here with my welder, you know, like the little bit of welding I needed to do to make it work. I didn't need any welding on that, of course, to just folded metal and cut. Um, and then since then, I also made um, a little stopper here on the lid. You see how I did those there? I just put uh, I just put two two little flaps like that on here. And I'll show you if I can get this over here. Yeah, so I'll just pop it off. So I popped it off. See, they're just on there to stop it from falling in the hole. So now when I go to put it on, I can just go down till those touch, which is quite nice. Okay. And then on the other end of this um, cylinder here, I, I did the square one. And that's, that's the shaft that fits in that little guy there I made suited up for it. I finally found someone to help me with this filming, so this might go a little easier. <laughs> Anyways, I want to show you guys how this slips in here now. Okay, have a look. So I made this notch on this, the square on this, I just, you know, coned it a little bit just to help it ease in. But if you can see, I just slide this in <clears throat> into this groove here now, and then it's going to set on to there, so here we go. Come show the over here. The see all that? I just drop it on top, slide it forward, and drop it in. So the removal of that uh, <coughs> of the uh, the removal of the uh, cylinder is uh, is is quite uh, quite easy to do. So let me turn it on. I'll show you what it looks like turning. Oh yeah, way to dump my beer camera guy. Anyways, I uh, see how it's turning, not too bad. I mean you can see there's a few little little out here and there, but it's turning wonderful. It should work great. Um, take a look at this side too, the gear side. There's a little wobble in the plastic here because my shaft's a little out of center, but nothing that terrible. Um, I like it. I got a nice white lid for the top, so uh, what we're going to do next is uh, I'm going to clean it all up, we're going to put some herb in there and see how good this thing works. Alright guys, we got it running, um, I had some herb to put in it from uh, an outdoor plant I had nice and dry, um, just turned it on, seems to be running pretty cool, pretty nice. I can see right under the drum already some really, really white stuff. It's hard to tell because it's... I'll try to grab some just to show. So we'll see what happens. We've got to let it tumble for a while. But um, as far as the machine goes for a homemade unit, I think it's pretty good. Um, time will tell. Um, so uh, thanks for watching this build. and. Uh, and, and uh, we'll catch you guys soon. Uh, we've got this new one going here too. Just put them in today. The other one's at about uh, five weeks flowered roughly. And uh, going into the sixth or fifth or sixth. And uh, this one just started. This is triggered right off the hop. And hopefully they'll only end up like that, about that tall. And just a nice bud. This is all skunk, um, purple skunk and Afghani and the perp. I got well, three different flavors in here actually. So I had this thing uh, going for about, I'd say about an, a good hour. And uh, this is what came about. Look at the lid, it's kind of staticky, so I guess it kind of stuck on there too. But uh, let's look what's under this drum. The drum looks pretty resiny knock some of this stuff off there look at it all wow Ooh. okay let me pull this out there we go let me set this on the ground carefully 
Ooh, all right. Let me grab a scraper here. Let's see. Oh yeah, look at that, guys. So look at that homemade sifter or whatever you want to call it, tumbler. Uh, you could do it too if you have a little bit of ambition. Thanks for checking it out. And uh, you know what I'm going to use this now for? I think I might infuse this into a, a pound of butter and make some can of butter. And then we'll make some good eatable out of it. We'll see how good the quality of this is. I'll test it a little first. All right, talk to you soon.